May profits be upon you. We're looking at pound USD, the cable. This is one of my favorite pairs going into the next week. Why? Why, RT Money? Why? Well, let me tell you why. Doggone it. Let's look at the RT Money Meter. What is the RT Money Meter? The RT Money Meter tracks the rate of change of each currency over a 15 week period. I update it every week. I updated it yesterday. What do we see? Pound. Pound last week was number seven, coming in at minus 802, a rate of change of minus 802 last week. This week is still at the number seven spot, one of the weakest ones, and it's at minus 891. Uh oh. It is starting to drop down, all right? That is incredible. Why? Because the US dollar ranked at number one, still the strongest of all of them. Last week, 845. This week, 839. A small drop off, a small drop off, all right? Is it, you know, we had uh, FOMC, we had NFP, da 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 da. All right, these things are looking, we got weight hikes and whatnot, the, 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 uh, uh, a slightly less hawkish message coming from uh, the Fed and whatnot, but we had uh, positive uh, bullish numbers for the uh, US dollar when, uh, with a uh, non-farm payroll. But look, pound just had a rate hike, right? Didn't it? You know, am I, I'm, I'm not crazy, am I? All right, so uh, they're trying to stay, but the problem is, the problem is they just announced uh, the country is sliding into recession. So that's gonna, I'm looking at further declines in that uh, currency. So putting the strongest against the weakest, that, that is what we're doing here. And I think this has a, the, the shorts in this market have the highest probability of success. All right, let's look at the monthly. Let's do a breakdown. Breakdown, breakdown. Okay, so uh, on the monthly, we can see all of that bearish momentum. Look at those big candles, lots of volume, lots of momentum coming into this zone here of demand. Okay, now a monthly zone, I would have it like such, and uh, uh, we are coming into it, right? You can see a little reaction going on right there. But I have refined it to one of the, uh, you know, I refined it to a, a lower, um, uh, what do you call, uh, lower time frame. Sorry. All right. So we have this point here. This the end of this week for liquidity as a, uh, as far as I see, a, the next target because I believe that we're gonna go, we're coming down further. Look at the momentum here. All right. We had a pullback. That's the way the market works. A push, an impulse down, a pullback, and then another push down. And the significance about this is that we broke that low. We broke that low with not only a close below it, you know, not only a wick down below it, but a close below it, which indicates momentum to the downside, right? If we go down to the, if we go to the weekly, all right, here is that uh, demand zone, all right, which I would have marked here, all right? We, you see that we've already come in contact with it. Again, I've already refined that down to the four hour time frame. okay? And we don't have to have that all the way up there. Again, here's that target. You can see the strength in the momentum to the downside. And that's all we need to see here. You know, we're still bearish on that time frame, okay? The high time frame is bearish. Here's where I have it marked now. The demand zone is marked here. All right, from the last bearish candle, the last the selling before the buy the buying starts. All right, and this is where you see the momentum and volume kick in. Right, so uh, I'm looking at this point as. Uh, uh, an area where we might see a reaction, all right? 
This low here was made in 2020. If we take that low, that's a multi-year low, and I expect some kind of pullback. Here's the deal. I'm expecting that pullback to come in because we have broken structure to the downside already. Look at the uh, four hour. The four hour really shows this. And on the four hour, you can see a low, you know, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high down here. We have pullback for that lower, uh, that, you know, a, a potential lower high. Price moves to the side, right? All right, accumulating orders and then manipulating the high here, taking it out taking out that high for liquidity and then breaking structure to the downside, sweeping the lows in the process for liquidity. And here we are now dithering, okay? I don't like dithering. Anyway, uh, but here's the significant part. We have a nice size uh, zone of, you know, a fair value gap here, an imbalance, if you will. This is an inefficient price move. That price loves to come back and fill rebalance rebalance this in the what is imbalanced here and then continue down all right that was a real retarded looking line all right so what would i like to see i'd like to see price come back up i'd like to see price to come back up forming that bear flag any price action that moves this price back up i'm looking for that to short i'm looking for bearish price action to follow. I'm looking for further declines in this market. So after this lower low is made and this lower high, we have a lower low. I'm looking for the lower high to be made somewhere around this area, a retest of this area. This, because price slammed through that, because price slammed through that, because this should have been a, a zone of demand. Price slam through it when you see it like that. What happens is if price comes out to revisit it, it acts as resistance and comes back down. So I'm looking for price to come back in that zone. All right. And if you check your uh use your Fibonacci tool, and I, I like to use it like this, all right, dividing the trading range the bottom of the trading range to the top of the trading range. I like to divide it into two uh, premium prices, discount prices. You wanna take your shorts from the premium prices because that'll give you the best price to take a short, all right? You wanna wait until it comes past the equilibrium, the 50% mark, all right, of uh, the trading range. And this is the area that it crosses that mark, all right? I'm looking for price to come back into this imbalance trade back into this imbalance so that we can take a short from here now exactly where that might be i don't know but what are you looking for you're looking for possible p o i's right we're looking for p o i's all right i'm looking i want to start looking right around this area all right and then i'm going to mark this area because this ends the fair value gap right i'm going to look at these areas here, all right? This would be the best area because it gives the best price, but this area I have, a, because like I explained about the, the mitigation point, I mean, the, this, some people are gonna call, would call this a breaker, a breaker. Instead of an order block, they would call it a breaker block, all right? And uh, I, I think that uh, we have a strong area, uh, uh, that, that'll be a strong area to look for the same, pattern that I look for every time. I don't like that. Come on, man. Let's try this again. Let's do this right. Uh, why do lines so squiggly? I don't understand. Why? Why? All right. I'm trying one more time. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> I'm trying to get it right, man. One, a, a pull up, a pull back, a higher high, and then an impulse that breaks the low of that pullback. And then a return to impulse somewhere in this leg of structure for price to continue down. All right, it's not gonna be that big, all right? It's gonna be smaller and we'll look for it on the lower time frames. Where do I look for the, that 15 minute? And then I enter in on the five and the one, okay? All right, I'll look for that here or here, one or the other but I need to see this happen first. 
Okay, I need to see that happen first before I enter a trade. That's confirmation. You wait for confirmation to take your trades, right? Boom. All right, so that's what we're looking for. We're gonna keep an eye on, we're gonna keep an eye on this area. And we're gonna keep an eye on this area. All right, if it makes it past this area. All right, I hope you enjoyed this, this uh, free analysis and this free education. All right, hit the like button if you would, just tap it. You don't have to smash it, just tap it one time for your brother. All right, and uh, uh, do subscribe so you can catch my updates, man. Right? You don't wanna miss the updates, but the likes and the comments support this channel and it keeps me going, all right? I really like to hear from you. I like to hear, get some feedback. If you think this is a strong um, uh, setup, leave a comment about it. Listen, this is my comment to you and I want you to comment on it. I think this is a, 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 a trade that could pass your, your, um, your challenge, if you're in a challenge or if you're in, a, in evaluation. I think this one trade will take you to the promised land if you do it right. I think this is a, a one you, you should hold on to. Your first TP should be right around uh, 1.228, yeah, call it 1.20, you know, 1.23. I think this should be your, your first TP after it breaks this, uh, uh, the uh what do you call that um <laughs> I feel like I'm losing my mind after it breaks that low here for uh liquidity and it comes into this uh this uh this demand zone I think this this will be a great TP1 all right but uh I'm looking for further declines all right from from this area to to the, uh, the, to the order block is 200, about 230 pips, all right? That should be more than enough to knock out a 1% uh, risk trade to take care of anybody's challenge, all right? So that's my comment to you. I'd like, you, I'd like to hear your feedback on that comment, all right? I will see you in the next video. Hey, I'm leaving a video on, the, on your two videos on your screen right now uh, uh, that are part of the forecast for next week. Check them out, man. Check them out. I think there are opportunities next week. I will see you in the next video.